hello once again, family and friends. We are the Moldens, and we are once again coming to share with you uh, another Sunday school lesson mm -hmm. uh, from our home. Yes, we are continually uh, exercising uh, social distance. Uh, we're still under the uh, quarantine, not so much as quarantine, but uh, the pandemic concerning this COVID-19. And so we are under the leadership of our pastor, the pastor J.J. Richardson Sr. Mm -hmm. uh, of the Greater Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, 2623 uh, 23rd Lewis Street in the city of Little Rock, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. uh, we just want to come to you once again to share with you a portion of our Sunday school lesson. Amen. Uh, just want to thank God for this day. Amen. This day, this resurrection day. And we are so thankful to the Almighty God for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As I stated, I am Minister D.A. Molden Sr. This is my wife, Vonda. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we're just so honored. Uh, under, once again, under the leadership of our pastor, uh, thank God for this opportunity. So today, we just want to get into our lesson. Uh, again, uh, this is a a beautiful lesson that we have today, uh, somewhat of a continual lesson. Uh, we want to thank God for His Word. Amen. During times like these, we need we need God's Word. Amen. And, and so we want to just enter into a word of prayer and asking the Lord God to bless our hearts and minds to uh, convey to you uh, as much as possible. The understanding of God's word uh, that we may apply his principles to our life to be the people he has called us to be in these days amen, amen. let us pray at this time eternal God our father in the blessed holy name of Jesus Christ we just want to say thank you once again for another beautiful day mm -hmm. yes Lord this day is a resurrection day the day that you have made Lord God a day of hope a day of of renewal, a day of life, a day of refreshing, Lord, a day of new beginning. And we bless your name for this day. And, and we pray, Lord God, that you just bless us as we, Lord God, fellowship in your word today. And those that are listening in, that they may receive, Lord God, a word of encouragement, a word of enlightenment, a word of instruction, a word, even if it's necessary, Lord, of correction, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, you would show us how to apply your word to our life, to be the people you have called us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, bless God, we are going to get into our lesson uh, today. And our lesson is coming uh, out of the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15. And my wife, Vonda, she's going to be reading, starting with verse 1, amen. We're going to go all the way to the uh, eighth verse, amen, and then we're going to pick it up at verse 12, all the way to the uh, verse 12 and 14, and we're going to go, it's going to skip to a little bit to verse 22, and to the 23rd verse, and verse 42 to the 45th verse, amen. And that is how our lesson will go today. Um, that we may convey the uh, understanding of our lesson. And so we're going to ask um, uh, my wife, Vonda, to do our scripture uh, reading today uh, in our hearing. Go ahead, Vonda. Okay. Chapter 15, starting at verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, mm -hmm. and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain until this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. 
verses 12 through 14. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain? We go to uh, verses 20 through 23. But now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Now verses 42 through 45. Amen. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in corruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Mm -hmm. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sister Bonda, my lovely wife. Amen. Um, for that reading. Well, brothers and sisters, let me take off these specks because uh, I think I can see a little better without them. Amen. Although I'm <laughs> growing older in age, but thank God for, for his, my vision. Our today's lesson, amen, amen, amen. Our today's lesson is entitled, Hope for a Better Life. Hope for a Better Life. Well, brothers and sisters, in light of our lesson today, I just want to read again uh, a key verse that we have in our lesson. It states here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, amen, verse 19 and 20. It says, the Apostle Paul states, he says that if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. Amen. Our lesson, hope for a better life. Uh, brothers and sisters, let me read this in your hearing. It states that people with the probability uh, and possibility of life after death, the question is, how can resurrection from death provide life that is different from what is experienced before death? In 1 Corinthians uh, and Mark, St. Mark, only life through the resurrection of Christ engenders hope for authentic justice. Today, brothers and sisters, we want to uh, just uh, have a little dialogue in this lesson today and to see what the Apostle Paul is sharing as he had written his letter to the saints at Corinth. And Paul had went on a missionary journey, if you ever go back and read in your Bible in the book of Acts, wherein he went on his missionary journey to uh, the city of Corinth. And he ministered to uh, the citizens there at Corinth and to share uh, the word of God with them, the gospel of Jesus Christ with them and and many believed amen because in that region and during that time in that culture uh they were there were many uh idol worshipers and they had all different kinds of 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 beliefs and rituals and things that they practiced so when paul came on the scene being an apostle that was birthed out of due due season and due time the bible says um, being appointed by God to be the apostle uh, and minister uh, unto the Gentiles to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ unto them. Uh, the apostle Paul, he started out his missionary journey and, and at Corinth was one of his journeys. He ministered to them and many of the believe, people believed at that time. Uh, but there were some things that was transpiring because Paul had to leave. 
Amen. Because he was a, a missionary and evangelist that was carrying out the commission that Jesus Christ had given him as he has given it to us today, brothers and sisters, to go and share and spread the good news of the gospel. As the scripture says, for it is the power unto salvation to them that believe. And so Paul, he had to depart from uh, the saints at Corinth. And there were those that was among uh, the new converts uh, at Corinth that was teaching and preaching some doctrine that was contrary uh, to the gospel that Paul had delivered unto them. And so Paul, he was wanting to encourage and, and reiterate to the believers how important it was for them uh, to continue to hold fast to what he had ministered to them as far as the gospel was concerned, for therein is how they had became saved. They had received Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so we want to uh, see how this lesson ties in, how it is applicable for us today. Amen. And, and, and our lesson goes on a little further. Let me just uh, ask Sister Molden, amen, that she would read uh, in our hearing uh, a part of our lesson in focus today. And to see how what we can glean from our lesson. If you would, Sister Mona, read uh, the lesson in focus uh, today. Amen. Amen. All right. Throughout the ages, the hope for a better life has motivated humankind to use their ingenuity, innate skills, and even their curiosity to discover better environments in which to live. Ancient cultures, including those who came to these shores, set out across the vast ocean seeking deliverance from tyranny and injustice for themselves and their posterity. A better life for most people focuses on the material and access to creature comforts, things that will eventually decay, mm -hmm. be lost, or be left behind when we die. We should all seek to live good lives to, and build foundations for a brighter future for our children and the generations following us. Mm -hmm. As noble as this is, without the surety of something beyond the experiences of this life, whether positive or negative, the search for a better life here is a futile endeavor. The real hope for a better life is yes. not in things, but in a person, Jesus Christ. Yes. And that hope is now and beyond our physical existence on this earth. This hope is based on the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, the lesson in focus informs us and lets us know, yes, true, all of us as humans, we are, as well as the uh, many of the uh, uh, discoverers of our uh, country today, uh, this America that we live in, uh, they, their endeavor and their objective when they cross the vast seas and they were desiring to uh, have a better life uh, because of the uh, tyranny that they were experiencing, the hardships and things that they were going through. And so they set out to uh, endeavor to look for things that would uh, become a better life for them. And so it is with us today, brothers and sisters, we go to work each and every day and those of us that have been blessed to uh, uh, bring forth children. Uh, we desire better things for our children. We desire uh, things better for uh, one another as husband and wife. Amen. All to try to enjoy and, 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 and live in such a way that, that we will uh, be free of a lot of unnecessary struggles. And so it is. But uh, as my wife was reading, uh, we must understand, brothers and sisters, that though those things may be good and fine, uh, in our objective to have a better life, uh, as we would call it. Uh, but we must never forget that when we are looking for better, we must remember, as what the Word of God tells us, um, Jesus himself states, what profit is it for us to gain the whole world, no matter what material things that we uh, set out to uh, obtain, what profit is it for us to gain all of these things Amen. And we lose our souls because the truth of the matter, brothers and sisters, these things will perish. Amen. Rust and moth and, and, and corrosion will set in and, 
and these things will fade away and, and we'll find ourselves always uh, going out to uh, replenish and, 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 and regather, reaccumulate uh, more and more what we call stuff. Mm -hmm. Amen. But that is not where we get our peace and our, our joy from. Amen. And the word of God tells us, as Jesus states, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give. Amen. But I give my peace to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen. And so Paul was wanting to encourage the body of believers here at the uh, offset of our lesson to let them know um, as he started out ministering to them that I don't want you to uh, get sidetracked. As you look around uh, your, your communities and your cities, as you look around amongst your people, your associates, don't get sidetracked by uh, trying to compare your life uh, to the lifestyle of others. Amen. As you've heard it said, trying to live like the Joneses, amen, designed to ride in a, in a Mercedes, but you have a, a, a Volkswagen budget. Amen. And, but these things doesn't give us and bring us peace, brothers and sisters. Amen. 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 As, as Sister Molden continues to do our reading, we just want to go on a little further, amen, in our lesson to see uh, what our lesson in context uh, says to us a little further. Uh, and I have some, even some uh, other uh, principles to share with you from our lesson. I think that it's going to be good for us in our hearing today uh, as Paul shares with us from our lesson, Hope for a Better Life. Let's look at again, once again, our, our lesson in context uh, to see what it has to say to us. Okay. The doctrine of the resurrection is the most pivotal point of Christianity. If Christ was not raised from the dead, then all we teach and believe is in vain. This was the central point of emphasis in Paul's teaching about it in 1 Corinthians 15. He was not attempting to convince the Corinthians to believe that Christ had been raised from the dead, but rather to convince them that they would be likewise raised to new life after death. His challenge was to refute and disprove the Gnostic teaching that the body was totally evil, but the soul was good. In addition, Greek culture taught and believed the immortality mm -hmm. of the soul, but rejected any idea that the body would or could be raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. In the opening verses of chapter 15, Paul reveals undeniable evidence of, of Christ's resurrection, explains its absolute necessity, and the nature of the resurrected body of the believer. Oh, praise God, praise God. Brothers and sisters, as Paul continues this lesson, um, listen to this. Uh, the statement that uh, Sister uh, Molden just read to us, wherein it says that the doctrine of the resurrection is the most pivotal point of Christianity. Do you all understand that? That the only reason we we are saved, the resurrection, our, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, is the foundation. Is the foundation of our Christian belief. Mm -hmm. Amen. And without the resurrection, Paul was sharing with uh, the believers at Corinth. Without the resurrection, brothers and sisters, there would not be a belief. Amen. There would not be Christianity if Jesus Christ had not risen. Amen. Amen. And on this day, this day, as we sit here in our homes, this is Resurrection Day. Amen. And this is, this lesson will be viewed, amen, Wednesday evening. But I just want you to know uh, that, praise God, He lives. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, He lives. Amen. He has, He has risen. Praise the Lord. And because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that's why we, as believers in Jesus Christ, were able to call ourselves Christians. Amen. Because of what Jesus Christ, he did for us on the cross at Calvary. Amen. When he hung, bled, and he died. And praise God, he was resurrected. And so here, the Apostle Paul, he's encouraging uh, the body of believers at Corinth to let them know that, listen, listen, first of all, in the in the outset of, of my ministry to you all, 
Uh, I delivered to you all the same teachings, amen, that I received myself called the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this teaching of the gospel has to do with the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the gospel, brothers and sisters, in a nutshell. The death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Without that, brothers and sisters, we would not have salvation. Amen? We wouldn't have salvation. And so the Apostle Paul, he was stressing to them the importance of them continually believing that message of the gospel of Jesus Christ that he had delivered to them. Amen? He wanted to encourage them to hold fast to that lest they had believed in vain, he teaches. He says, now listen, now listen. I know that there are some amongst you. Amen? that will speak contrary to that which I deliver to you. But I want you to hold fast to what I share with you. For this same gospel is the same gospel that I govern my life by, that I'm governed by, that holds me, that I stand on. Amen. And he will let them know that even as today, brothers and sisters, that without, amen, the evidence, uh, as Paul goes on to share with us, of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He says, without that, amen, we wouldn't have hope. Amen? amen. If you ever thought about, when you think about our judicial system, that when uh, people are called to the stand to be uh, credible witnesses, amen, uh, one of the principles about calling people to the stand to be a witness is that that individual that stands on that uh, stand in court, uh, that individual is required by the court system, the judge, to make sure that the statements that they are about to make as be being a witness of whatever they are testifying about, that it is true. Amen? And so Paul, in our lesson today, he had to reiterate to them, amen, and reemphasize to them about the evidence, the un unfollowable evidence, amen, irrefutable evidence uh, that they had amongst them, amen, because it wasn't so far uh, 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 after uh, the Apostle Paul's conversion that Jesus Christ, amen, had, had been re, uh, ascended up into heaven. Amen? Jesus Christ had ascended up in heaven, and Paul, he had his encounter with Jesus Christ as we read in the book of Acts on the road uh, uh, of the Damascus. Amen. He had his encounter, his divine encounter with Jesus, and he had gotten saved, converted. Amen. And the Lord God used him as Paul started out uh, the the. Uh, journey to go and spread the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So he wanted to uh, emphasize to them how important it was for them to hold fast to the teaching. Amen. Uh, here in our lesson, brothers and sisters, uh, Paul, he uses some words that, that uh, we need to kind of touch on as he goes on in his lesson uh, to help them understand the importance of them believing in Jesus Christ and give them some point of reference because here in the New Testament, uh, we understand that if it wouldn't be a New Testament if it hadn't been for the Old Testament. And, and he wanted them to understand the things that transpired, amen, in the Old Testament were symbolic to what was taking place, amen, and what had taken place concerning Jesus Christ and how it all tied in and he used some words here in our lesson as we go a little further into our lesson. Uh, Paul, he shares with uh, the body of believers at Corinth. Listen to this again as he went on uh, emphasizing to them about um, the power of the resurrection, how important it was for them to believe that Jesus Christ had been resurrected because there were those that was among them, the, the uh, 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 Gnostic believe, uh, believers in their doctrines that they was teaching, they didn't believe that there were, uh, 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 it was possible for uh, the human body to be resurrected from, from the grave, amen, and contrary to what our Bible teaches now, we believe that one day, amen, we will 
be resurrected. These bodies will be resurrected to join back up, amen, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ once again. Amen. Amen. We know that the soul dwells within these bodies. Amen. And we know that God is going to unite us all back together once again on that great resurrection day. And we're going to go a little further to understand how all of this is going to take place and how and what the Lord God did as, as a symbol in the Old Testament to establish it and fulfill it in the New Testament and what we how it applies to us today and what we have to look forward to. Amen. Here in our, our text, this is what it reads in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Let me just read this again. I know Sister Molden read it, but let me read this again. Amen. Wherein the Apostle Paul is trying to emphasize to them and, and try to get them to remember the things that he once shared with them. He says in our lesson in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, he says in verse 3 again, a few following verses, he said, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Amen. Now, how that Christ died for our sins, listen, according to the scripture. And Paul said, now listen, this is not something that I'm just speaking of of my own self. This is not my doctrine, but this, I'm giving you some reference to what was written, amen, in the Old Testament. You remember in the book of Isaiah, wherein it prophesied and testified of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he would come on the scene, amen, to be the Messiah, to be uh, the deliverer for his people, amen, Israel, as well as for us today, Amen. Paul says, listen, this is according to the scriptures. I'm not just making something up. Amen. And he says that we, excuse me, that he was buried and that he rose again. He said, this is the testimony that I'm sharing with you. This is it, the evidence that he rose again the third day, listen, according to the scripture. He says, according to the scripture. He says, I'm, what I'm sharing with you it coincides to that which was already written. Amen? Mm -hmm. It coincides with what's right. He says, and that he was seen of sea. He said, wait a minute. Now listen, listen. Now you know you know this person, brothers and sisters, talking to those that was at Corinth. He says, you know Cephas. Amen. You know Peter. Mm -hmm. You know, you know Peter. You know that one that that you know he had a he had a a, a problem with would, would open his mouth sometime when he should not have. But you know him. Now, he followed Jesus Christ. Amen? He said, Jesus Christ appeared to him. Amen? And y'all heard him. You know, how, you know how Peter went around talking and testifying and telling everybody how Jesus Christ had appeared to him? And it says not only did he appear to Cephas, he appeared to the twelve. Mm -hmm. Many, Paul, the Apostle Paul uh, was really uh, trying to uh, convey to them uh, how important it was to them to hold fast, brothers and sisters, to what they have been uh, 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 taught and what they had uh, believed concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, listen. In this life, the Apostle Paul says, as being Christians, there is a um, worldly philosophy that has gone out uh, over the air uh, in time back in history and even is today that people today think that being a Christian a believer is is just it's just a crutch to believe in Jesus Christ it really is just something that you can either believe it or not it's just something that you choose to believe to make you sociably accepted amongst a certain uh, group of people that that call themselves Christians, and, and it's really nothing to it. It's just a a, a a fairy tale. It's just a something that you choose to believe uh, to uh, satisfy your own conscience. Amen. But brothers and sisters, the belief in Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ Himself, He's real. Amen. Uh, uh, he lives. Yeah, he hung, bled, and died on the cross over there, amen, in, 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 in Jerusalem, amen. Um, he was resurrected again. Uh, even those soldiers back then, uh, the, 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 the governor and, and those that ruled uh, over in that land, 
Do you not know that when they went looking for the body of Jesus Christ and they saw that the tomb, the tomb, the, the, the stone was rolled away from uh, the door face of the tomb. And, and when uh, uh, the soldiers went in because the order had been set out that if by any mean that this body is taken from this tomb, uh, he comes up mission that their lives will be uh, uh, held accountable. Amen. For the life of Jesus Christ, for the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. And when it all came down to it, uh, they were paid to fabricate a lie that the apostles came and took the body of Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters, people are still selling out today when it comes to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That they are choosing rather to go by what our society and the philosophies of our day is teaching concerning Christianity, that there's nothing really to it. It's just a mindset, mind over matter. But I'm telling you today that the life of Jesus Christ, it was a reality back then and it's a reality now. And because of the resur resurrection of Jesus Christ, we that are believers in Jesus Christ, amen, we experience real life. We experience peace. We experience true joy. Amen. No, even with this COVID-19, no matter what's going on in our world today, in our nation today, brothers and sisters, we as children of God, of the living God, through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior, we have hope. Amen. Amen. We have peace. Amen. Amen. We have joy. Amen. Of all the disasters, amen, and the hardship that people are encountering, the Word of God he reassures us as God's children. God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. He says, the world, in this world, you'll have trouble and, and many trials and tribulations. He says, but in me, you will have peace. Amen. And so here the Apostle Paul in our lesson today, he just want to uh, uh, just reiterate to the believers at Corinth to let them know, please do not let no one uh, change your mind or cause you to uh, believe some other doctrine it calls you to uh, not believe that Jesus Christ he rose again and and that the Lord God he's coming back and and he's going to resurrect our our mortal bodies amen yes he is brothers and sisters he went on to let them know excuse me he went on to let them know not only did he he appear to Cephas and and other 12 he appeared to so many more 500 he appeared to those brethren at one time amen so what Paul was really doing here, he was just trying to uh, uh, establish with them uh, of all the things that they had been taught and what they had, they were eyewitnesses of themselves. Don't let somebody come and change your mind. Don't let these situations of this life cause you to forget that not only in this life do we have hope in Jesus Christ, but in that life which is to come. Amen? Amen. Okay, and also when you look at this scripture and he's talking about how there were others that were witnesses as well to Jesus' uh, resurrection, it lets us know that we know that right now we are separated in the flesh, but in the spirit we are still the church. Amen. And that is letting him know that there are others, not just myself, that have witnessed this thing. And it also lets us know the importance of us coming together. So even though we're apart right now, we must realize that we do need the support of one another. And we do need to touch each other. Amen. So let's not get real comfortable with this situation of doing these recordings. This is good. And praise God for it. But let us always have the desire in the heart not to forsake the assembly of, of God's people. Because we need, we need to feel each other every now and then. Amen. 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 And also... I was thinking about this scripture as we were talking about the pivotal point. Uh, that was a great, great time for us. That was a time um, to let us know as a people, even though there are those of us that were not so called born into the family of Christ, we were engrafted in, we were adopted, and we have all the rights that's any other. That was. And we thank God for that. We thank God for what Jesus did on the cross for us. He made things better for us. And he gave us a hope that we will not otherwise have. And I thank God that we have that hope. And I thank God that we know that this is not it. 
that we're going to a place, there's no disease that can come there. None of this. Can you just imagine how great it will be when we do get to the other side? Amen. We'll Amen. be experiencing a life that is not interrupted by disease. It's Hallelujah. not interrupted by some phone Hallelujah. call that can change your, the course of your life. From there on, there is nothing that we have to worry about once we get there. And if, we, if it wasn't for us believing in the gospel of Jesus Christ, then we will never have a hope of actually being part of what God has prepared for us. And I just thank God for this lesson because uh, every now and then, I believe we as God's people, we need to be reminded of what a great thing we got going with Jesus. Because then don't take this relationship that we have with him for granted and don't take one another for granted because God uses us all as the body of Christ to make sure that those things that he will have done in this earth on this side of eternity mm -hmm. are carried out. Amen. So brothers and sisters, the most extensive uh, teaching uh, of the doctrine of the resurrection uh, in the Bible, especially for my lesson today in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, uh, the Apostle Paul, he thought it necessary. If you go back and look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, you know, I believe that there are about 53 verses, if I'm not mistaken, there's about 53 verses. He, he thought it's necessary, uh, out of all the books uh, in the New Testament, he thought it necessary to, to emphasize and, and, and hone in on this subject concerning the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how important it is for us as believers to understand that 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 this is the foundation. Amen? This is the fundamental doctrine of our, our faith as Christians. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen? And so we want you all today to remember that. Amen? And even on this wonderful day, which is called Resurrection Sunday. Amen? Uh, as you listen to this lesson in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 uh, on Wednesday night, uh, the Apostle Paul, amen, he's trying to encourage us that, that though there are many things that's going on all around you, I want you to know that the foundation of your salvation lies within the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And not only in this life is God concerned about us, but in the life to come. Amen. We have hope now and we have hope in the hereafter. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. That was a question uh, as the uh, believers had uh, uh, concern about the teachings that was going on through others that was trying to uh, distract them, brothers and sisters. Paul, he brought great evidence and to let them know that, hey, listen, listen, listen now, listen. And that's necessary, brothers and sisters, from time to time because we experience things sometime in life that can kind of blur our vision and and distract us from believing uh, uh, what we uh, started out with, amen, or to keep us anchored, amen. We need brothers and sisters to kind of give us a nudge from time to time to, re <laughs> to remind us, hey, listen, come on now, amen. So Paul, he was doing that in our lesson today, amen. amen. Let me read this. Let me read. Amen. It says in our lesson, it says, uh, in question and form, was Jesus Christ raised from the dead? And if so, why was it necessary in verse 12 of our lesson? So these were some of the questions that, that were being raised by uh, some, of, some that was among uh, the church at Corinth. Amen. That in spite of the clear teachings of Christ and the apostles about, about them, Paul, he wanted to just settle these questions. He wanted to answer them by presenting uh, some information to them to let them know uh, about the, the negative consequences that would occur uh, if it were not a resurrection. If this wasn't a reality. Listen to what's he, what he said, verse 13, amen, wherein he states, he says that, in, in, in reference to this verse 13, he says that his response is both uh, logical and theological. Amen? Read that verse 13, if you will. So if there is no resurrection of the dead, 
then not even Christ has been raised. My, my, my. Paul, he argues that if there is no resurrection of the dead, amen, then Christ died, died in vain, amen? Yes. And we that die in the Lord, we, we will not be resurrected, amen? And if he did not rise, then the preaching of the gospel and faith in Christ are meaningless and are of no value. Amen. We, as we may have heard preachers uh, of a past generation say that we might as well uh, close up our hymn books and Bibles and go home. Well, Paul uh, forms uh, hypothetical negative consequences to positive consequences. He says that his inter he interjects and uh, affirms when he makes this statement, but, mm -hmm. he says, I heard what they have said to you. He says, but, amen? He says, but, uh, to emphasize that what he previously uh, hypothesized is not so. See, because Christ was raised from the dead. Not only did he rise, but also his resurrection was the, amen, prototype or, if you will, forerunner of the resurrection of those who will die in him. Amen? Listen to the words he used to help them understand. It's something they, they could, they could uh, relate to. He used some words here. He says this word as, that, that's... Uh, uh, Help them to better understand. He says, the first fruit, the first fruit, he says. Listen to what he said about the first fruit in our lesson. I just want to read that again. About the first fruit of them that slept. Let me read that. I want you all to hear that again because it's going to help us understand. Amen. In verse 6 of our lesson. He says, and after that he appeared uh, to more than 500 and to the brothers and sisters at, at the same time. And he says, most of whom are still sleeping, then some are falling asleep. He said, listen to what he says about the first fruit. Verse and verse 23, let's go to verse 23. Amen. Thank you, Sister Molder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, but... Each in turn, Christ, the first fruit, then when he comes, and those who belong to him. Amen. Jesus Christ, the first fruit of those uh, that slept. Mm -hmm. Amen. Read that if you will, Sister Moses. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, the first fruits, he says, consisted of the first barley sheaf of the harvest offered to God, consecrating the full harvest, implying that later, like fruit would follow. Mm -hmm. Christ's resurrection, resurrection. I say <laughs> Christ's resurrection then was the earnest or pledge and proof of the resurrection of all who come to him in faith. Let me stop you right there, Sister Moore. Let, let me share something with you as we get close to a close of our lesson. Amen. It says here in our lesson about the first fruit. And, and often I was trying to under, get a sound understanding uh, to be able to articulate to you and as much as I could to help you understand how this relates to us as, as believers today, this first fruit. Now God had in the Old Testament had commanded his, the children of Israel that after they entered into the land that God had promised them that, that, that when they go out to plant their uh, their crops that they were to bring to to the Lord uh, under the uh, order of the priests uh, the first produce that would come forth from their crops which was called the first fruit they was to bring it uh, to the priest and and it was to be offered to God and the reason why God did this uh, he wanted the people of Israel, as he wants us today, to understand that God is the God 
that's God over everything. Amen. He's God. He's in char charge of all. Amen. He's Lord of Lord and King of King. He's Lord of your of your crops. Amen. He's the God of your harvest. He's the God of your increase. And so the people of Israel, they understood that when we brought our first fruit to God and gave it to him, amen, through the order of the priests, amen, what we were doing is letting everyone know that the God that we serve, he is the God that will provide for us. He is the God of our increase. Amen. He is the one that blessed our crops to grow and we want to give to the Lord as an offering of thanksgiving called our first fruit to let the Lord know that not only are we trusting in you amen for our crops we're trusting in you amen for the increase and so this was like a a down a down payment uh, to God to let God know that we are thankful for what you are doing in the beginning of our crops producing and we are thankful for you to you uh, that you would bring forth amen the increase in our harvest time amen mm -hmm. and so in our lesson it goes on to say okay i'm gonna drop down through christ's obedience and those related to him through spiritual birth resurrection will come in the order prescribed by him amen. christ's resurrection was necessary because it is the surety of believers' future resurrection Amen. when he comes again. It should also be the catalyst to awaken and revive the desire to work diligently to help eliminate social injustice and to proclaim hope for a better life now while we await his coming. Amen. So brothers and sisters, as Jesus Christ, the word of God, uh, let's us know that Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us and dying for our sin, he became the first fruit of them that slept. Amen. Yes, there were many people that had died. Amen. And that was resurrected. But there was none. Amen. Like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that when he was resurrected, he died no more. Amen. All those that had been resurrected, amen, had been resuscitated back to life, amen, they, they died again, such as Lazarus. He, he came about the grave, amen, but he died again. Lazarus went back to that grave. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he was resurrected, amen, he had victory over the grave, victory over death. He died no more, amen. And so what Jesus Christ did for us, as the scripture says on the cross, he became the first fruit of them that slept. Meaning, what Christ did, as the children of Israel did symbolically in the Old Testament, when they will offer up their first fruit to God, like a down payment of thanksgiving to God, to let them know that I trust you for the increase, God. I trust you for the harvest. And Jesus Christ, what he did for us on the cross, brothers and sisters, he gave to the Father, amen, his first fruit. He was a first fruit offering to the Almighty God for us. Amen. He says, Lord God, this is a down payment because I believe what I'm offering to you, Father God, that this is going to bring forth a great increase. Amen. In that which is to come, the great harvest. Amen. You remember what the Lord God said now? He says that I am Lord of the harvest. So what Jesus Christ did, amen, he did something that was already guaranteed that we, amen, that are uh, the beneficiaries of the first fruit that was offered, that we are the increase, amen. We are part of the harvest, amen. And brothers and sisters, as we come to a close of our lesson today, not only do we want to have hope in Jesus Christ in this life, yes, we believe in that which is to come, amen. The greater harvest, amen. That great day when we will all sit at the table, amen, of the great feast, wherein we will all give praise and thanks to our Creator, we want to encourage you that while you live in this life on this earth, that we have a responsibility, amen, toward one another, toward our fellow man, amen, to be the witnesses that the Lord God has called us to be in this time, these days and time, to let others know that the Lord God loves them, that there's hope, amen, amen, there's deliverance. And we need to be the kind of people that God uh, will use and manifest himself through and that others will see and look at us and realize that there is there is hope and there is a reason, there is a purpose, amen, for uh, Jesus Christ. And that without him, 
Amen. Our lives will just be in despair. Amen. We will just be, be traveling through this world trying to find our way. Amen. So Simone have something little something else we, she want to read before we uh, close our lesson. It's for our life application. It says, believe in and acceptance of the resurrection of Jesus Christ can be considered a personal challenge and call to action. Amen. He left the work of building a just kingdom for all in this present world in the hands of his people today. Yes. He has also empowered and equipped us to do even greater or more extensive works on earth than he had done. Amen. Praise, praise the Lord. Brothers and sisters, hold fast to that. As we went through our lesson today entitled uh, Hope for a Better Life, we know that life only begins with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, in this world, we have many troubles and trials, conf uh, conflicts, and all kind of confusion. Uh, but in Jesus Christ, there is peace. In Jesus Christ, there is rest. Amen. And I want to encourage you, Sister Molden and I, uh, coming to you out of our homes. We are the members and, and ministers of the Greater Ga Galilee Missionary Baptist Church uh, in the city of Little Rock, Arkansas, under the leadership of Bob Pastor, the pastor, J.J. Richardson Sr. Amen. And we just want to encourage you today that in Jesus Christ, amen, there is life. In Jesus Christ, there is hope. In Jesus Christ, there is new beginning. God bless you, brothers and sisters. We want at this time just to offer a word of prayer and intercession for you to encourage you to let you know that God sees you where you are. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness. Thank you for your tender mercy. Thank you for this day, Father. Thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for him being our first fruit. Thank you, Father, for the hope. Thank you, Father, for the increase. Thank you for life, a new beginning. I pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord God, that are listening in today. I pray, Lord God, that they are receiving, Lord God, the unfollowable sound word that can save their souls the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the power of the resurrection that can change them. Father, I pray that those that are sick among us, that you would, Lord, send forth your virtuous power as we touch and agree as believers, that you would heal, that you would comfort, that you would deliver and revive. We pray continually, praying continually, Father, for the leadership of our nation. We pray in Jesus' name that they will come into the knowledge of the truth and that they will acknowledge you in concerning your standard of righteousness to make the right decision that's in the best interest of the citizens of this, of this country. Have mercy, O oh Lord God. We, your people, called by your name. We humble ourselves to you. We seek your face, Father. Heal our land. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.